Welcome back, everyone. So we continue with the conversation with the Minister for Power Works and Housing, Babatinde Fashola. Well, a lot of Nigerians will be expecting a lot because when the party promised, they promised a lot. So expectations are that they will perform a lot. Let's get back to the conversation on what the government is doing in the areas of power works and housing. Uh, quickly, uh, let me ask you, uh, how far with the Mambila Power Project? Okay, before we go to Mambila, let me say something. I think it's important that Nigerians must ask themselves, when last did a political party make the promises that they can remember? When last? Since 1999. They should go back and ask, what, did, what were they promised? So I take credit first for being the member of a party that sits down to articulate a program, and then says to Nigerians, these are our promises to you. And I'm very happy to sit down here today, because when people say there are no issues in policies, I always disagree. But well, are you saying that those promises made, that you have kept to them? Wait a minute, I've told you that these are aspirations. But I think some credit must be given, that Nigerians can remember what we say. Of the set, you have told me, for example, we say we are in every state. Our message is also getting to you, Sheung as a citizen, because we are in every state. Now, where is Mambila? Mambila has achieved first an EPC contract closure. That hasn't happened in four years. No government in Nigeria could sign a proper contract on Mambila. We've done that after 40 years. There were three major Chinese companies, one for each administration. One worked with them in 1999, another worked with them in 2000. They brought yet another one and they ended up in court. Again, we have brought them out of court. They have signed a joint venture. We are now working at the level of government to government, Buhari and Xi Jinping, saying that we will lend you the money to build Mambila. We have provisioned in 2018 budget for our prorated share of the, uh, of the counterpart funding. We are now waiting for Exim Bank to conclude the terms of financing and hopefully draw down. But you know what? People should understand about Mambila. Mambila is going to require $5.7 billion. It is a five-year construction program. During those five years, Mambila will require 18 million bags of 50 kg cement to build. It will also require 18 million tons of aggregate, sand, granite, laterite stones. And it will require 42,000 tons of steel. Wrap your mind around those numbers. For those who are weaponizing jobs, it is infrastructure that leads to jobs. At the moment, there are 116 Nigerian companies who have submitted applications to our office asking to participate. Insurance companies, banks, transport companies, logistics companies, food supply companies saying we want to be part construction companies. And Mr. President has signed an executive order that anywhere that Nigerians are competent, we must give them the priorities. So for construction alone, Mambila is the project that we should be seeing here. Unfortunately, we are not going to borrow money to do that when we had $100 per barrel of oil for at least half a decade. This was what other countries did at that time. This is what we are now doing now when we have less income from work. But just imagine the labor, just processing a bag of cement, loading it, transporting it, mining and blasting, aggregates, 18 million tons over five years, transporting it, mixing it, then bending iron rod. And hopefully, a Jakuta comes on stream can benefit from this. So this is where the jobs are tomorrow. But, the, but wait, a lot of the things that you talk about, I've interviewed you and you said, when these contractors come back on stream, when they come back to site, there will be uh, jobs. But instead of the jobs getting there and the figures getting better, the NBS, the Nigeria Bureau of Statistics, are giving figures that are not uh, uh, making Nigerians happy. Rather than us getting more jobs, the issues are that the jobs are not there. Those are the issues. So, and okay. Nigerians will be asking your government, if you say you are doing this project, I think it's but important. Nigerians are not getting the jobs. Important. I think it's important to go to construction site and go and ask them, because they will vote. 
They know the difference. They were unemployed three years ago. Their employers' construction were owed three, four, five years. They're getting paid almost every quarter at the latest six months. But that said, I think it is also important the media owes an, a, a, a duty not to say what MBS didn't say. MBS re released our unemployment figures. Unemployment is people who don't have work. MBS never released a number of people who lost their jobs. And there are two different things. If you are sacked here today, you lost your job. But there are people out there who want to come into channels, and you get numbers of them. They are unemployed. They didn't lose a job. If you look at the 20, I have the, the, the uh, employment numbers, 2015 quarter one. The total employment numbers in 2015 quarter one that I have here is 67.9 million. The total for 2018 quarter one, three years after, is 70.6 million. So the total employment numbers has increased. For this quarterly period three years ago, quarter one of 2018, quarter one of 2015. But how many more people have come out of school? How many more people have finished their training? That number is increasing. And that is why we are saying infrastructure is the key to continue to drive growth. Now, on this station, when we were growing at 7%, right? That period that we now seem to validate, you were reporting jobless growth here on this program. People were unemployed when we were growing at 7% because the growth was not real. It was based on debt. It was based on imports. We were creating jobs overseas. Let me show you the numbers for sugar imports. In 2014, we were, we were importing sugar with $462 million a year. Now that figure has dropped to 244. Rice, we were importing a billion dollars worth of rice. That number has dropped to $18.5 million a year. Now that is opportunity for Nigerians to fill that gap. So those who were importing, are they coming back to import? Because if they're, not, if they're coming back to import, they should forget it. The farmers won't agree. Those who have invested here to produce sugar and wheat now are not going to agree because they're already taking up positions. If they want to stop import, right, and start producing, we have already started doing it. 